गुड मॉर्निंग डियर स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम टू ऑनलाइन चैनल यू पी आर टी प्रयागराज माई सेल्फ डॉक्टर अश्विन प्रताप सिंह असिस्टेंट प्रोफेसर इन इंग्लिश स्कूल ऑफ ह्यूमिटीज यू पी आर टी प्रयागराज टूडे आई एम गोइंग टू डिस्कस बी ए इंग्लिश यू जी ई एन द कोर्स टाइटल इज यू जी ई एन वन जीरो वन रीडिंग पोइट्री इन दिस पेपर वी सेलेक्ट द फर्स्ट ब्लॉक ब्रिटिश and indian poetry and in this unit the second robert browning's prose pk today we discuss about paper about the poet robert browning the second of the great victorians after tennyson wrote a great deal of poetry in the form of dramatic lyrics and monologue he used his works to express the feeling of others his unfailing interest in men's character and their reaction to his favorite subject of art religion and love caused him to express their feeling in his dramatic monologue often browning's or rather his subjects thoughts race ahead of his poetry and syntax and for this reason we find some of browning's poetry difficult to understand robert browning was born on may 7 1812 in camberwell england his father who worked as a bank clerk and his mother anna browning was an accomplished pianist and a devout in evangelical christian from 14 to 16 He was educated at home attended to by various tutors in music drawing dancing and horsemanship at the age of 12 he worked as a volume of baronic verse entitled in candita which his parents attempted unsuccessfully to have published in 1833 browning anonymously published his first major work pauline and in 1840 he published sardello which was widely regarded as a failure on september 12 1846 browning was married to elizabeth barrett against the wishes of barrett's father the couple moved to pisa and florence his wife died in 1861 her death was great loss to him browning went on to publish dramatic persona in 1864 on december 12 1889 he died peacefully as a result of heart failure now we will discuss about the poem prospike the poem prospike reflects the poet's philosophy of life it is an autobiographical in nature and reflects the poet's optimism his courage and fearlessness it is first published in atlantic monthly and later included in dramatic persona in 1864 the title of the poem is very appropriate and very philosophical and the word prospike is originated latin word which means look forward look forward means ki here the poet thinks that after the death he reunion to his beloved wife in the life of the god so the title is focus totally the optimistic nature of the poet it reflects the poet's belief in the immortality of soul the use of latin suggests facing death is timeless issues the poem is composed in the dramatic monologue here the question is arises what is dramatic monologue means here the two words dramatic one is and the monologue on the other hand is refers the type of the poetry is in the dramatic monologue means a single speech spoken by the characters and the listeners is a silence 
and it is the poem composed in the autumn after uh, his wife's death this is beside dunn's sonnet on death the great poem challenging death browning writes on the awful fear of death in the black minute in the powerful of the night and the arc fear the poem expresses what his wife had made of the poet there is stead fast sadness that is wife is gone there is a stead fast resolution due to her sweet and enduring power with which after her death he promised he presents his sorrow and memory of joy to stand and with stand in the battle of life ever a fighter and one fight more it uses beautiful imagery throughout the poem a poem to characterize death like a brave man he wishes to encounter death the fight with death will be the last battle of his life it will realize his soul from the trials worries and miseries of this world and give him a chance to meet his beloved wife in the kingdom of god and live with eternal peace and happiness in contrast of his other poems prospike portrays a positive view of natural death and the speaker is poet himself now we will recite the poem prospike fear death to feel the fog in my throat the mist in my face when the snows begin and the blast denote i am nearing the place the power of the night the press of the storm the post of the foe where he stands the arc fear in a visible form yet the strong man must go for the journey is done and the summit attained and the barriers fall though a battle to fight a uh, the garden we gained the reward it all here the poem begins with a rhetorical question fear death the poet asked himself it is the interrogative form while the but the poet is ready to face the death in these lines the poet is narrating the experiences of which he will go through before dying the poet used the analogs and here he compares a dying man to the climber as a climber climbs a mountain to feels a suffocation blood and the hard breathing similarly in the in this poem the poet expresses the dying man's condition at the death time at the time of death a dying man feels suffocation in his throat as he feels difficulty in breathing and the vision of dying persons become blurred everything becomes gloomy and dark when the coldness begins to overtake the body and other organs of the body slowly but steadily are deprived of their natural heat denotes that death is very near the dying man can experience that death is approaching the poet has graphically presented a picture of our suffering which a dying man faces at the time of death the poet says that he is nearing the place where the fear of death stands and awaits that one about to die here the poet is optimistic towards the fear of death the power of darkness is spreading and hard breathing the enemy of mankind death is coming death has occupied the place where he is in therefore the biggest fear that is death comes in visible form here the poet used the arc fear arc fear is personified by the death however strong men 
are they must surrender before death because the journey of life is over therefore they should not fear death since he has reached to the peak of life and has achieved everything therefore all the barriers will disappear as soon as man's life is rounded off by the coming of death a battle is always to be fought before the final reward of life is attained this will be the last fight of life the death is considered as an enemy who fights with a man and defeats him now the second stanza of this poem is i was ever a fighter so one fight more the best and the last i would hate the death bandaged my eyes and forewar and wade me creep past no let me taste the whole of fear like my peers the heroes of old bear the brunt in a minute pay glad life's errors of pain darkness and cold the poet calls himself a fighter and consider this will be the last fight of his life he regards it as a challenge to him and wants to enjoy every moment of it here the poet considers that life is a battle and throughout his life he has been a great fighter even in life one achieves the highest goal at the end of difficult journey which one must face with many obstacles or difficulties the reward can only be had after a great struggle so the poet faces all the pangs and sufferings at the time of death in a final and glorious battle in other words he would not like die as a coward he wants to face boldly every pangs and sufferings during that time he would not like death to gently take him away he doesn't want to slink away quietly here the poet says that coward's death is not appreciated by him and therefore he does not want that death so mercy on him the poet strongly resist this idea and says no he wants to face all the sufferings or the pangs of life heroically and considers death as his opponent he wants to fight the battle with bravery and leave this world like the brave poets of the past who were brave warriors and who bore the brunt of death without any sign of grief or sigh here the picture of the heroic fights in which knights participated is presented by the poet the poet like an honest and sincere person wants to undergo all the troubles which he should suffer in his life but somehow escaped them he would gladly pay off the debts in the shape of suffering and the other stanza and the last stanza of this poem for sudden the worst turns the best to the brave the black minutes at end and the elements raise the fine voices and rave shall dwindle shall blend shall change shall become first a piece out of pain then a light then thy breast o oh, thou soul of my soul i shall clasp thee again and with god with the rest here he believes that for the brave the worst turns into the best if brave face worst with confidence in this way the last black moment of death 
comes to an end. With this end, all the rays shall diminish the different types of the viruses that start coming shall blend with the cries and shrieks of devil shall change into the peace out of pain of suffering. He believes that the worst things like death turn the best men into the walrus once when they are facing their last minute of life. All pain and struggle that accompany death will disappear and become sweet as they dwindle. In the last two lines, the poet remembers his dead wife. Suddenly, a light will appear which is the light of heaven. The poet says that with this death, the poet can embrace his wife again and in this way, his soul will meet his wife's soul and they will reunite and they will remain clasped together forever in the presence of God or the life of God. The poet literally looks beyond death to eternal and joyous life. Death thus is rendered powerless and ineffective. He wants everyone to face death bravely and turn the disadvantage into advantage for death is God's will and there is nothing to be afraid of it. He tells the readers the death is not something to be feared but rather to be embraced because then it becomes easier to accept it in the end. In the next slide we are going to discuss the use of poetic forms and meters in this poem. The whole poem contains 28 lines and in this poem the poet address to the wife by her husband who wishes to meet his wife again. The poet is determined to fight with death and meet his wife. The poem shows the journey of poet from darkness to light, despair to hope, pain of loss to happiness of reunion. The poem is written in dramatic lyric because it has mixture of dramatic and lyrical verse. There are short and long lines which create a remarkable rhythm. There is no stanza in the poem. The diction is a very simple and the tone of, of this poem is optimistic. The poem is full of imagery of death. The images, mist, storms and darkness create the fearless, uh, create the fearful aspects of the death. The last line of the poem arise pathetic feelings. The poet used the archaic words like thy and thou. Here he used the extended metaphor of the battle. The poet used the alliteration of the figure of his speech. Fill the fog, man must bear the brand, shall dwindle, shall blend, shall change, shall become peace out of pain, soul of my soul. And the other figure of speech is used by the poet in this poem, that is personification. He in the seventh line is used for death. Here death is person personified as an enemy. The rhyme scheme of this poem is A B C D C D E F E F. The pentameter lines alternate with trimeter lines thus creating an impression of quick forward movement that ties up with the journey of metaphors and thank you.